Hey guys, how you doing? Kelly's Truck Talk here. I'm talking about stuff that is happening right now in the real estate business. I'm still working. I'm still busy. I got to do it while I'm driving down the road. I uh, just thought I'd give you a, or give you a call. <laughs> it's like I'm leaving a voice message all of a sudden. I wanted to talk to you guys about deposit checks and how you write your contracts regarding deposits. And I gotta say, a little caveat to that, check with your manager, make sure you're doing what your office manager wants you to do. Um, so here's just my opinion on this, okay? Because of the actual functioning that happens in real estate deals, right? So, all right, you got a buyer, uh, you, you get an offer together, um, the way our, our trust account laws are now, it just isn't advisable to, to take money until you actually remove all the conditions to the contract. And then once all the conditions are removed, you know everybody's moving forward 100%. You've gone through all that stuff. And now you put the deposit in the trust, seals the deal. That money can get lost if they don't complete the deal, all that, right? So that's the reason for a deposit. So what we do is we always get a bank draft. We never get a personal check, we don't take cash, we don't do anything like that, just get a bank draft, and we get our clients to go to get a bank draft. Sometimes there's logistics involved with just getting a bank draft, right? Like, they got sometimes they gotta take time off work, sometimes you're waiting for the results of an inspection, and you've got your subject removal day for Friday, and now it's like five o'clock on Friday, and you needed to get an answer from an electrician or a, you know, a furnace person, or you know, you need to get an answer before removing the conditions to make sure that there's not a cost that's too extreme so that we have to renegotiate. Maybe you are in the middle of renegotiating a contract because of something, and now you're late in the day, and now you're removing conditions, and your client hasn't had the chance to go get the money from the bank because they weren't sure it was all gonna come together. That's a very realistic scenario. This happens in the business all the time. And so if you have on your contract that the deposit of $20,000 is gonna be paid upon subject removal, but you have a subject removal date that if you don't remove those conditions on that date, you're offside on your contract or you gotta ask for an extension or something, right? Wouldn't it be better if you could just be in line with that contract because you had till midnight on that Friday night, for example, to remove your conditions. So you remove your conditions now, but now you got the you got to deal with the deposit. Now where I'm from, if you don't get the deposit in based on the terms that are in the contract, you're in breach of the contract. So now you got to get things signed and make sure everybody wants to stick together. If the seller wanted out of the contract for some reason, multiple offers, back backup offers, whatever, they would have a way out of that contract. So it's really important that you write it up front to allow for other things that could occur during the buying process, right? So I always put within one business day of subject removal, one business day, because if I, if their bank is closed on Saturdays and Sundays, then they're not gonna be able to get that deposit check till Monday, and we've had to remove conditions on the Friday. We got this whole weekend that we can't do anything, and so your contract could be offside by midnight that Friday night. So, super important to write your contract in a way that it's gonna stay enforceable. So I always use one business day. I've seen a lot of times uh, on contracts where someone will say within 24 hours, right? Just because of logistics, you got it, you know, okay, they'll go to the bank the next day and get it, or they'll get it within, you know, even a few hours of subject removal even sometimes. It just depends on the situation. But even within 24 hours, sometimes can be unenforceable. If you have a subject removal on a Saturday and no banks are open on a Sunday, well, you're offside on your contract if you say within 24 hours. So I always put one business day and a business day is a day where banks are open for business. And so, like if you have a holiday or you got a, you know, an American Thanksgiving on a Wednesday, well, that's not a business day. Um, if you've got, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I just thought I'd throw it out there for you to think about. It's something I run into all the time. And here's, here's a prime example. I am on a Sunday right now driving out 
to my client's house, which is about just about an hour away, and I've got to pick up the deposit check, the, the bank draft from his house because I didn't make a change on the contract from 24 hours to one business day. So because it says within 24 hours, on a Sunday, I am now driving out to go pick up a doggone deposit check because of my own fault for that exact reason. And that's why I wanted to talk to you guys about this. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Why didn't I put it to one business day instead of 24 hours and make that change like I always do? Ah! So that's my suggestion. Make it one business day. And even in your terms of your contract, you can define further what a business day means. Um, and that can apply to some other things that you're talking about in your contract if it comes down to it. So that's my suggestion. That's from Kelly Johnson. Talk to your managing broker. Make sure everything's in line with how they like to do things or what's going on in your area. But uh, that's, that's kind of the reasoning behind that for me. Talk soon.